Good Living this morning is Peter Fulton and Brandon Heaney. How are you doing, guys? Good, thank you. Good, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. No Peter, problem. I have to start with you because of your height, it's so obvious. Why cricket <laughs> and not basketball? I've uh, never really played a lot of basketball when I was younger. I'm just... Yeah, I had three three brothers and my father used to play cricket as well. So, so it's been in the family? Yeah, it's been in the family for a long time, so didn't really have a choice, to be honest. So that was it? Yeah. And now two metre Peter. <laughs> Is height, how, how does that help on the cricket pitch? Um, well, I think it, it probably helps at, at some times. Um, obviously, as a batsman, you know, if you're a bit taller, you can probably um, maybe handle the bounce of the ball when you're batting a, a little bit better, but it, it's also got its disadvantages. Um, you know, it sometimes can be, I guess, can make you a, a little bit um, less light on your feet as maybe a, a shorter sort of player might be. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's got its pros and cons, definitely. And so you're a batsman, aren't you? Yeah, a batsman, yeah. Okay, great. And captain of the Canterbury Wizards. Uh, yep, yep, captain. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's a, obviously a you know, big honour and, you know, something that I take a lot of pride in. Mm, that's great. How's it been going so far? Uh, well, to be fair, we've been going not that well of late. We've had a bit of a, a mixed run in the in the HIV Cup, so we've got three games to go and looking to you know do, do as well as we can. Hopefully, win those three games leading into our one-day competition, which carries on afterwards. So. Mm, that's the, the confusing thing for me. <laughs> There's so much cricket out there now. So, Brendan, fill me in. So, we've got the 2020 games, also one days and four days. Is that right? Yeah, there's the, they brought the, uh, back the Plunkett Shield this year. That's a four-day competition. Mm -hmm. So we played that in uh, November mid till mid-December. Then we have one-day competition. Um, we played the first round of that. And then January has been 2020, devoted solely to 2020, and then back to one-dayers um, after the last three games and then finish off with another round of Plunkett Shield. So, right. <laughs> yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of cricket. That's good, though. There's some fantastic cricket out there that we can get behind and support, which is great. Now, Brandon, you were born in Invercargill, but you have been in Christchurch for quite a while, haven't you? I have, yeah. I moved up here with uh, my mother when I was about five, five and a half. So, so you've got rid of that southern R, which I have. is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have, definitely. And where were you educated? Just St Bede's Boys, is that right? Yeah, I went to St Bede's, yeah, mm -hmm. which was... Um, it's good school, isn't it, Pete? You both some beads boys. <laughs> no, no, I went You're to Christ Oxford, College. Oh, so nice, right. Yeah, bit of a bit of a rivalry there. Yeah, yeah, I can see now why. <laughs> but you both play cricket for your schools, obviously. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, so tell us, 2020, Peter. We've got Auckland coming up this weekend. We had a win over them last time? Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, that was the first game of the 2020. We beat them, so we were off to a good start. But things haven't gone as well from there. But um, it should be it should be a great game. They've obviously got. Uh, they've got a lot of big name players. They've got the likes of Lou Vincent, Martin Guptill, Scott Styris, and Daryl Tuffy. So they've obviously got some some big names in their side. And and yeah, it's, you know, hopefully we get a nice day and get a good crowd along to support us. Yeah, that's right. That will make a huge difference as well. Because I guess it's really important for you guys when you're out there playing these home games that the support of the public means so much to you, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Um, you know, I, I can remember going down, as I'm sure Brandon can, going down and watching Canterbury at the old Lancaster Park, as it used to be called, and. You know, it, it does make a big difference for for the team. If you've got a big crowd along along there supporting you, it's you know it definitely gives us a boost. Mm. From the um, psychology side of things, when things aren't going well, what what do you guys do to really kind of pick yourself up and and get out there and you know still try and achieve? Well, that's probably the the toughest part about cricket, yeah. I guess, is the mental side of things. You spend, I guess, so much time as a, as a batsman anyway. You spend a, a lot more time being around cricket not actually batting so there's a lot of downtime a lot of time to think exactly in yeah. your hotel room at home you know especially if things aren't going well so yeah you, you need to be really mentally tough and I think um, you know probably the the best thing to do is to just try and to, to focus on each ball ball by ball as a batter and and just try and worry about the small things rather than sort of looking too far ahead of yourself mm. I guess. Do you have a special team person that's on board purely to help you with things like that? Uh, yeah, we've got uh, John Quinn, who's he, he works at St Andrews as a counsellor, and he's also done a little, little bit of uh, sports psychology as well. So, you know, he's he's always available if guys want to talk to someone, and um, he's I've, I've found him really good. He he's played a lot of cricket himself, played club cricket in Christchurch for a long time, so. He knows, he knows yeah. the sport and he knows the demands of it, which makes it a lot easier. Yeah, and he can relate too, which is really good. Uh, Brandon, you were Canterbury Bowler of the Year for 2007 and 2008. I was, That's yeah. a great achievement. Yeah, it was a good season, actually. We um, ended up winning the uh, four-day competition that year as well. So I guess I, I think I bowled the most overs in the, um, in the competition. So you know, if you bowl the most overs, you give yourself the best opportunity of picking up wickets. Yeah, that's fantastic. It was a good year. Yeah. yeah. So once we kind of die down with the season here for summer, what, what do you guys do after that? Uh, guys generally look to negotiate contracts um, overseas. Mm -hmm. 
So a lot of players will go to either England, uh, Scotland, Ireland or Holland. So To play their summer season? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah which uh, works out really well. And that, that starts mid-April, finishes start of September. So it gives you about a month off um, until club cricket starts back here and our contracts start from uh, the beginning of October. So it works in really well. So you're pretty much playing cricket full-time? Yeah, it's full-time occupation now, which is which is good, and it's always nice to get overseas, um, do a bit of travelling, mm. and uh, I'm going to Holland this this winter. Have you been there before? No, I haven't. No, so there's a couple of guys in our team uh, who have, and they really enjoyed it. So um, yeah, yeah, it'd be nice just to go somewhere a bit different. And uh, yeah, that's right. It's a perfect way to experience obviously other cultures and things, but to be doing what you love at the same time, it's great. Yeah, we're really mm. fortunate, mm. and uh, and there's been a big big change in the last two or three years in, in terms of cricket and. And the opportunities now, especially with 2020, are... Um, yeah, they're are huge, good. aren't they? Yeah, they are. What about you, Peter? Where are you going to go? Uh, well, I'm looking at going overseas as well. So I haven't found a, haven't found a club yet. Still You're trying still to, working on still that? Trying to, still Keeping trying to do some deals. Open? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, similar to Brandon, really, either Holland or in the United Kingdom. Mm. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully sort of finalise that in the next few weeks and, and get something sort of set in concrete. And, and yeah, it's, it's always, always nice to go over there and... It's a little bit more relaxed. You don't play quite as much as you do over here. So um, it's a different pace. A little bit, yeah, a little yeah. bit. There's a bit more time. You can do a little bit of travelling and and things like that. So so yeah, it's 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 good to obviously still be be earning some money and and making a living. Um, but mm. yeah, just getting away from 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 Christchurch in New Zealand and just yeah, doing something different for a while. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, good luck with that, guys. And of course, uh, we've got the big game which is happening on Sunday at um, the Village Green QE2 um, versus the Auckland Aces. That starts at two o'clock, and then on Tuesday at um, Rangiora taking on Wellington. Is that right, the Firebirds? Yeah, yeah, that's mm, right. Yeah, okay. that's the last game. So, so it's a nice, really nice ground out there at Rangiora as yeah. well. So hopefully, a few people can can uh, make make the trip out from town. It's only sort of 20, 25 minutes, and it's a really a really lovely ground. There, so. Yeah, that's right. And start time at five o'clock, so that's good for anybody. They can just knock off work a bit earlier as well, take the whole family out there. Exactly. Now, speaking of family, we do have some family passes to give away to Sunday's match. So if you would like to head along, uh, if you're watching the morning or the afternoon show, call us now on 3777033 and you could pick up one of these family passes to support the Canterbury Wizards as they talk, uh, take on the Auckland Aces. And it will be another win, I'm sure, guys. So good luck. Thank you very much. I know you're heading off to practice now, so appreciate you popping in. It's been great.